<laughs> well, hello. Well, hello, party people. We are back. We are live and Liddy in the city of Philly. My name is Brittany Rue of a slightly twisted female. The true trans don't like me. The rad femmes don't like me. The conservatives don't pay attention. And the libs all oh, shit their pants. All righty, here's my dog again. There was some dickhole who said that my dog is gross. She's like, I love you, but like your dog is just like gross. And like, I know I'm gonna get like a lot of hate for this comment, then I'm gonna put it down anyway. I was like, bro, huh? <laughs> Block. Like, hello, fuck you think this is, no, I'm just kidding, alrighty, hello Rob D, hello Greek Yogurt, hello TPS, Mackenzie Leonard, Cosmo, Patty P, Humper, Max, here we are, and of course everybody say hello to my lovely moderator, Helena Blavatsky, uh, an extra special guest, Hold on for one second, the Joe can't stay in. Because he gets real annoying, real annoying. Susie Glucksman is in the house, as is Cindy. Everybody, everybody. Hello. Yeah, he is a cute animal. He might be annoying, but how dare you call him gross? How dare you call him gross? All right. Well, I love you guys, and I don't feel very well right now because I had pelvic radiation therapy in 2021, and now because of that, every couple of months, I get an inflammatory flare-up where it feels like I have a severe urinary tract infection, except the best and the funnest part is that unlike a UTI, this is not resolved by antibiotics, and in fact, it's not resolved by anything, so it's literally debilitating and it makes me feel like I'm going insane but there's nothing that I can do about it the radiation really is just the gift that keeps on giving so is this jubilee debate <laughs> uh, I, I was gonna go I like wasn't sure if I wanted to go there was like a few different topics and like some people are like oh why are you still covering like you know all of these petty jubilee first of all it's important to go through everything for everybody who's like some woman, and it's funny because Karen Davis covered this in her live stream. She was like, why aren't you just going, you know, why are you fi wasting all of this time on people who are on our side and going after individuals? We should be focusing on politicians. Uh, first of all, ma'am, you are more than welcome to focus on whoever you want. Start a YouTube channel and like I'll 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 tune in to you, you know? I get bored sometimes. I listen to YouTube is like my only form of entertainment. And I would like to listen to, you know, some other voices. I overdose on Karen Davis pretty much nonstop. And then I like listen to other people and, and a bunch of true crime. And then I also listen to a bunch of like animal things i was into the african gray parrots for a while um i'm like a big fish tank person might be a little known fact about me i have several fish tanks that i like to maintain in my spare time i'm thinking about getting another one much to my boyfriend's chagrin and um yeah i enjoy watching youtube channels about fish tanks but I do still like to stay abreast of the gender critical voices in the movement. So if you'd like to add your own, you can go ahead and do that instead of telling me what to make content about. But until then, we will continue on this Jubilee debate. Why is it important? It's because these are the people who are directly influencing kids and other people who are making up all of the trans community and i also think that specifically the sort of like true trans people like blair white and buck angel who routinely contradict themselves it's important to point out their contradictions and their uh logical fallacies and just hypocrisies because there are a lot of gender critical people who do not study this to the extent that people like me or, 
you know, Karen White or Karen Davis or a lot of you who I see. I mean, a lot of the names that I see in my live chat are the same names that I see in Kelly J. Keene. I see. I mean, even when I find like some new little like niche, like gender critical uh, channel, I'll see like a bunch of you guys have like already found it. And so you guys are amazing and you guys tune into a lot. So I'm sure some of you are like pretty much experts. You guys are probably consuming more gender gender critical uh, content than I am, and it's impressive. I'm sure there's collectively so much information. However, there is also there are also a lot of gender criticals who are new to the topic, who maybe don't have as sharpened or honed critical thinking skills, or or whatever the case may be, right? And they tune into people like people like Blair White. They're probably recommending like, oh, there's this gender critical trans person named Blair White and Buck Angel. And they're probably like watching like, oh, wow, it exists. And it like, it, again, and it's like they don't realize just how contradictory these people are. It's important to point it out. So in the meantime, uh, and if you can't tell, I'm trying to cope right now because my God, am I in so much pain? The problem is it's like the reason why urinary tract infections are so painful for women. It's because they are literally right up alongside our clitoris and our clitoris is like the most sensitive part of our body it's like a bundle of nerves so when you have an infection that literally lines beside your uh clitoris it's like throbbing intense horrific pain that you really can't keep your mind off of so i almost wasn't going to do this stream because it hurt so bad but i was like you know what rather than just sit around with a heat pad trying to not want to off myself let me just get my mind off of it Alrighty then. Oh, it was so cute. I was watching a Magdalene, the uh, Magdalene Burns, where she was responding to like Blair White, and she was responding to Ariel Scarcella, and oh, I feel like I have such a special affinity for Magdalene Burns. If you don't know who like patron saint Magdalene Burns is, she is to this day, I think, one of the most like cognizant, poignant voices in gender critical. Uh, community and not just because so she passed away because of neuroblastoma I think she had uh, blastoma she had um, a brain tumor that they were they originally misdiagnosed which is very similar to me they almost misdiagnosed me but I kept pushing and unfortunately because of the time that had been wasted in between when she was first having these sort of like blackout headaches and, and neurological symptoms and to when they finally diagnosed her as having a tumor, it was like pretty much too late. And so she passed away and she was a gender critical lesbian, friends with like Mr. Menno and Aja the Empress and stuff like that. And I think she knew like Kelly J. Keen. And I mean, to this day, you go back and you watch her. And it's of course, it's amazing that she only has like 80,000 followers or something like that or subscribers. But she's just so remarkable, so poignant. Um... You know, and I have such an affinity for her because I feel like we both went through cancer and I it, it still horrifies me that she lost her battle and that she was like a boxer, um, just a really, really like solid woman all the way around. So if you don't know her work, uh, go to my community tab and scroll down a little bit and you'll see Magdalene Burns or just Google her. But rest in peace forever. Love to her forever. And her voice carries on. And it's like somebody gave me such a high compliment and said that, you know, they see me as somebody who's like carrying the torch for Magdalene. And like uh, whether I'm worthy of that or not, I don't know. But, you know, that that's such a high honor. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. Let's just get right back into it now that I have uh, fucked off for a whole nine minutes. Okay, and we'll see how long Jubilee lets me play this. I, it's, it's happening no, all the time. No, I they have to say it's happening all the time. Twitter there. account. I'm sorry, they, like, Let's see what they're bickering yeah. about. Let's see what, the, what all the gay men are bickering about. Women. I want to make it inclusive of everyone. I think the middle ground, though, is, and I feel like I'm not coming at this from an extreme place. I feel like an extreme place would be like no trans women in the bathroom ever. That's the extreme position. I'm OK. So did you hear that? OK, Blair White is not against men in women's bathrooms. I am so tired of hearing these pro Blair White people be like, oh, Blair doesn't use the women's bathroom and he's very against that and he stands for women's spaces. No, he doesn't. And he just let us know once again 
that he is he absolutely uses the women's bathrooms exclusively and believes that once you start passing up to his you know standards then you too can be a man in the women's bathroom i don't know why we all think that autogynophiles are going to have some like big sign on their head that says autogynophile there is a severe misconception that all autogynophiles are like the the gross dude in the like crappy party city dress who looks totally like a man with some like bad outfit on whereas like the homosexual transsexuals are all these like sexy like small body little you know totally transitioned like perfect you know like dolls and there that's just not the case there are plenty of autogynophiles who uh, have transitioned well and who can pass, you know, at, at a first glance. I don't think most people pass once you start really talking to them. I think all of us can tell when something is off. But it's like at first glance or just, you know, at a real superficial level, there are plenty of autogynophiles who can accomplish this. Why you think that that's just like not possible or why some of these men. So to say that some men, once they, you know, at a certain point in their transition that they can use women's bathrooms. How in the hell does that sound like somebody who's on the side of women and children? Does that sound like an ally to you? So the next time that one of you comes up to me and like, stop starting fights with people on our side. We're all fighting the same fight. No, the fuck we're not. Because these people are not on my side. I believe that women should have sex segregated spaces and children should be able to go with their mother to a female only space so that they can do what they need to do. That is not the side of Blair White. He wants it to be so uber special, a special elite privilege for only so ooh, so super special elite trans identifying males let's get back into it i'm saying work on your transition take it as your responsibility and be respectful and that's the middle ground right this, this is a, this is a, this is a self-preservation issue right so if somebody's in the bathroom and they have a boner that looks bad on all of us and when people and when, when our community is not calling that out and not saying that this is but wrong how many how many can, i'm just and here we have sarah sarah acknowledging that this is uh, this whole like fake like conservative trans gen, trans uh sexual or whatever it is the trans identifying males being conservatives and the whole fake notion of a gender critical trans person which is so oxymoronic that it is actually moronic um is really about as he just said clear as day it is about self-preservation it is not about protecting women and children it is not about uh, really preserving sex segregated spaces and honoring the dignity and privacy of women and children because men like Sarah and Blair believe that certain men who are also uber special and elite and get the special pr passing privilege get to come and, and basically uh, view women in very vulnerable settings, right? That's not protecting our privacy. They're not on our side. It is so obvious. And again, and I've said this a million times, the whole gender critical trans person is all about preserving transgenderism. Okay. If you think that it's about like, they really want to like make a change. No, they saw how serious the gender critical backswing was. And they're not, these are like the more intelligent ones. Like they're the ones who are like, no, stop drawing so much attention to us dumb asses so that they, like we can go back to flying below the radar and get away with doing things that we shouldn't be doing right? That's what this is about. It's about protecting their ability to keep doing because Blair and Sarah, they know that if this keeps going and all these queer theorists get to keep, you know, acting out, they're going to lose their oh so uber special trans twans women privileges as well. Okay. And also no offense, but like, does anyone think that this guy, Sarah is passing? Does he use women's bathrooms? I sure hope he doesn't. Just, no, I, I point, get, how many cases has that occurred? It, it happens. That, it happens a it, lot. We I, see it. It's, it's happening no, all the time. No, I there have to say it's there, happening all the time. There's a Twitter account. There. I'm sorry, because like I just want to make the picture mm -hmm. the back. Yeah. Goes everywhere. I mean, there's Twitter accounts with millions of followers that show this stuff multiple times okay, a day. Okay, now goes on. Okay. And so, and so we're we're showing that they. Th what was the point of leaving that in? Maybe just to show how much they were like all squabbling, like a bunch of petty just school children and it's like yeah no. 
These types of things do actually cause harm to trans people. So if you're looking at a trans lens and to say, what what are we doing? We need to combat that stuff and come together to combat it that stuff. It does not encompass the entire trans experience. No, and that's right. all I just want to say. Yeah, I think I see a lot of different points from everybody here. Honestly, like I can understand like how some women may feel unsafe with men in there in the restroom. Men. When I say men, I mean men. I'm not talking about- oh, so he's not a man. This guy is going to go and t- do some mental gymnastics to tell us how he's not a man. Bro, you're all men. And, and it, oh, no, Joan is absolutely right. Blair doesn't really pass. He's just like, he has just like a really tiny little body. Oh, and everybody who was yelling at me and saying that he's actually tall, uh, not true. He's 5'5". Five five. I guess he, everyone was saying that he was like dwarfed Candace Owens. I guess she must be teeny tiny. But you can see Blair's like bone structure is like real tiny and he clearly has, you know, some eating disorder maybe or whatever the case may be or he's just really tiny and just super maintains his weight and cuts calories, which is fine. You know, I think that that's fine. I also think that we are so used to seeing so many like morbidly obese people that you see someone who's like a normal weight and was like they're anorexic um but i mean he you know might have some whatever the case may be but um yeah no it's like it, if you look at the can he very like carefully curates which photos of him are out there and he has no ass no hips um whether he's gotten some fat transfers he might have or he just edits his photos not sure i think he might have actually gotten some fat transfers because even in this thing but you can tell he still has such um you know such android uh shaped pelvis about trans women so being a non-binary person that sometimes has the choice to either go into a men's restroom looking like this Looking like this, you can look at me. Looking no, like this, it's just interesting. I thought this was a trans debate. That's oh, what I don't thought. Even. That's what I thought. Why are people, people for the trans, 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 trans No, they don't. Again, I thought this was a trans debate. Again, and Blair keeps this idea that it's some like you know, real diagnosable thing that there's like this real objective way for us to tell. Blair, no, I'm sorry, you're all self ID, it's all equally ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know. Maybe you can educate yourself a little bit. On I think that. I think I can educate then you. you figure out, I think I can educate you. you know, what right. the reality is? I'm sure there's a means. non-binary so. jubilee episode. Uh, well, because it's not a debate about who is really trans and who is not. It can be. We're talking about restrooms as a trans non-binary person. When I go into a place that only has men's, men's and women's restrooms, and I'm dressed like this, mm-hmm. my choice to go into the men's restroom at that point puts me in danger. Six years ago, when I I was transitioned almost eight years ago, but six years ago, it was never an issue for me to use the women's room. Girls would literally drag me in there with them and say, girl, you need to be in our bathroom. And I was like, uh, I felt uncomfortable back then. I don't pass. I know I don't pass. So that's a me problem. And I'm not going to turn my fear of being attacked in the men's room into a woman's problem. It's still a me problem. So I need to work on myself and, and... Well, I mean, also, sir, you're like six two. <laughs> you're like six two. I'm sure you know. Again, and no one's attack. I mean, I'm sorry. I just I feel like it's such a fake narrative. And why is their fear of being attacked so much bigger than ours? I have a little like of all of them. I probably have like the most sympathy or empathy for this guy. Um, it's like he looks like your typical AGP, but you know he's just kind of like quick, like he's quick to leave everybody alone, and I appreciate that. You know, I would exclude him from pretty much any space that I was in. If I saw him, I would take my children and I would leave the area or cross the street or whatever the case may be. And I appreciate that he's just like, yeah, I I get it and it's fine, right? And that's the whole thing with the whole Phil Illy uh, argument, you know. Con- like debate and everybody's like oh how are we going to enforce dress codes and what do you want him to do and it's like uh no i so like on like you know i know karen davis talks a lot about vice laws where basically like criminalizing people who cross dress and like i hear where she's coming from i think that might be going too far um and i don't think it's necessary i think that if we can work together to um to just, again, protect women's rights to association where we are allowed to keep men out on the basis of you, you're dressing inappropriately. You know, you are you clearly are displaying signs of sexual degeneracy, which we know is typically comorbid. Again, Karen Davis talks about this a lot and it's, you know, autogynephilia. 
is very often comorbid with other, you know, more serious paraphilias. I mean, they're all serious, but like sadism, sadomasochism, uh, flashing, voyeurism, exhibitionism. So, you know, we you can assume that when you see one of these guys, you're getting a bundle of sexual paraphilias. It just sort of starts to spiral off. Um so, yeah, so I believe about really enforcing women's right to free association so that these men have to make a decision and saying, OK, if I decide to do this, then I am I am choosing to live on the fringes of society and nobody is going to sit there and hold my hand or, you know, try to help accommodate me through that. I am making the decision to no longer participate with mainstream society and I'm basically going to be like, you know, kicked out. Right. You can get your you can get his basic medical needs met. You can go buy food, that sort of thing. But like, you know, we have the right to be like, no, you're not coming to this event. Stay out of this area. Stay out of here. Stay out of there. And that that's as far. You know what I mean? I think that uh, protecting women's rights and protecting people's rights, conservatives rights, religious rights, whatever, to basically say, no, we don't want to participate in this. And if you are a private entity, you'll have the right to do that. And he just has to deal with the consequences. And it, it, it sucks. Does it suck? Yes, it sucks. I don't pass. I know I don't pass. But I still respect women. Yeah, right. Uh, P, you know, the PDF file. Oh, no, John. Exactly. PDF file and all that sort of stuff. And zoo file. Uh, and a lot of other, you know, again, it's like if whenever you see stuff that somebody will do in public, just assume always that that is the mere tip of the iceberg that if you're seeing somebody who's willing to act out uh in a way that is really that like catches the attention of a lot of people just know that that's only what they're going to do in public okay we imagine what what goes on behind closed doors when no one is around just assume that it goes a lot deeper to the root than, than what you're seeing Men enough and i'm some people, some trans people aren't capable of handling themselves against a man, but I am confident in my ability to do that. Not everybody can, I, I get that, but it's just now, six years ago, I used to use women's room. Now I don't, because women have spoke out, they've come out and said, we're not comfortable, there's too many self id people out there just taking advantage, and uh, I, I choose to use the men's room to protect them. I can definitely actually uh, almost empathize with a lot of trans women and their experience in the bathroom and a lot. All right, this woman is so toxic and I feel like she was under like all of the women in this are like mostly ignored and it really just turns into like a squabbling match between like a bunch of men uh, to hysterical men. And again, they say that we're the super like we're the kind of like petty squabbly ones. Uh, no, it, the lesbians were way better than these men were. And like all of the like once again, the trans identified females are all taking a back seat. They all still may occupy a female spot in society. It's like you did all that stuff to yourself shooting testosterone all the beard everything and yet you're still ignored thrown to the back seat no one's paying attention no one's checking for your voice like do you get it yet you're a woman no matter what you cannot transition to escape misogyny i'm sorry that's just not how it works better to team up with women a lot of the uh, turmoil with going in and uh, you know, especially with passability, but the, the layer that I feel like in the conversation that's missing here is actually trans men. And also the fact that I was born biologically female and a lot of the things that trans women experience of violence in the bathroom is what I experienced as a child. So the reason why my education here is not necessarily to create uh, an idea that I need to conform to Eurocentric standards. Myself, I'm a six foot tall trans man, size 13 shoe, so I don't fit into- Eccentric standards? Ma'am, uh, that didn't even make sense. But like somebody, uh, so Murphy's bed says you make a hundred percent sense. Thanks. They shouldn't be in women's spaces. They pose a threat to privacy and safety. One hundred and ten percent. Why do women support or warn themselves? I'd like to know that too, because even the guy with the the bad wig on was like, I originally stayed out of women's spaces, and it was women who pulled me in. And I think it's like maybe women are just so desperate clinging to the idea that there is like some group of men who actually understand us and who are safe and who maybe who can provide us 
you know, male companionship and that will like advocate for us. Or maybe it's like women who think that like if we can just ally with certain men that like they can be our ticket into kind of getting some power back in the patriarchy and that these men will be there for us and these men will have our back and they really get it. And it's like, I'm so, unfortunately what these women don't understand is these men, these men don't understand us. In fact, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing if they did. You know, we act like, oh, just regular, like, heterosexual family men, like, know nothing about women. And it's like, well, I don't know. Because it's, like, men that I've known who are married to women, who actually care about those women, who care about their families, and who actually, like, honor their responsibilities as father and husband seem to, like, be more in tune than these men who, you know, be like, yeah, girl, yeah, oh, my God, you know, and all this other, like, tropey stuff having to do with women. It shows how little you know about us. That, you know, you think when you try to reduce us down to a bunch of stereotypes and sexist behaviors and and tropes and things like that. To the Eurocentric standards of what a woman is, and I never did as a child. I was, uh, you know, bullied relentlessly for this and isolated from many spaces. So this discussion about trans women being in the restroom also affects biological women because here's, guess what? You know, biological women come in all shapes and sizes. There are, you know, a lot of lesbian women that deal with this issue that I've related with and 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 empathize because we both get pulled out of the restroom and thrown and 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 guys try to beat us up because we're in a restroom with women and then on top of it to add that layer that it's not even okay and why is that happening why is that happening that's a more recent phenomenon because people are now on edge because now we realize that we cannot trust the institutions and the law and the legal system and the things that are supposed to be in place to you know uphold uh, civil society and protect women and children and protect people and they are letting us know that they're not going to do that so now people believe that they have to take it upon themselves had we not had this big invasion of men in women's spaces and very dangerous men and we normalize the fact that men with dangerous paraphilias are now not to be questioned and are allowed to have like unquestioning uh, access to vulnerable women in children's spaces, then, then yeah, people wouldn't be so on edge. You should be checking your your fellow queer theorists about that, okay? Because that is the response. That's what happens when you so aggressively gone against us. And I'm sorry, but I am a little bit less concerned than, you know, some women, uh, some people in general are maybe like, you know, embarrassed or inconvenienced if, you know, whatever, if it means that we're going to hold the line about safety. Okay. Now, if people are, are putting their hands on a woman and, and after she's clarified, but I've never, I've talked to a lot of butch lesbians and I talked to Carol when I had my conversation with Carol, who again, she is a very androgynous, uh, like, like, you know, chemically altered woman who had, you know, taken exogenous testosterone. So she has male pattern, uh, hairline. She has, uh, you know, more of a testosterone affected voice, other things like that. She keeps her head shaved down, her hair shaved down and she wears masculine clothing. I think she has a feminine look to like me personally, you know, and, and, whatever the case may be, but she's like, yeah, that, that happens to me. And it's usually as simple as just being like, no, no, I'm actually, I'm a woman. I'm just gender nonconforming and whatever. Um, and it's like, if it were to escalate, then you get somebody involved. Right. But at, at the end of the day, it's the fact that you're more offended by that than, you know, some women maybe being, embarrassed or inconvenienced than the actual assaults on women than the fact that a little a little girl who went to school uh was sodomized and raped in a bathroom by a so-called non-binary transgender student a ma- a male in a dress and you're less offended by that it makes me really question your priorities here miss even being discussed in any mainstream that this is just completely wiped out and that you're standing up for women but you're not standing up for women children you're not standing up for biological females that are children you're only standing up for what really affects you and it's kind of sad that the idea that passive bro how not how not 
How not? Of course, of course. Protecting women's rights is protecting children. I've always said that. By caring for mothers and caring for women and caring for the community of women. Because again, women are predominantly responsible for the care and keeping of our Earth's children. By protecting women, you're, you're, you're enabling them to protect children. We're the first line of defense for children. You protect women, you protect children by default. Ability is, is you need to work on your transition. A lot of folks, especially in our community, have no access to finances, resources, jobs to even get their foot in the door to get access to hormones. So you're putting all of these barriers just for them to be able to go to the restroom, which is a natural thing that we all have to do. So what do I need to do? Piss outside? Because that's how I was treated my entire childhood. I would. I just feel like when this whole topic comes up, like it obviously goes back to like there's. So she has a little bit of a point. So first and foremost, miss, if you were that concerned about your like safety and that was really, really the issue, then you wouldn't be doing all of this. I'm sorry. You wanted, you weren't born that way. You wanted to cut your breasts off. You wanted to take the real issue, honestly, is the testosterone affected voice and the uh, beard, right? That, that's the two main things. You decided to do all these things. You can shave your beard, shave your beard you know, wear uh, some like more feminine signaling clothes or grow your hair out, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, right? You like to, so so we all have to accommodate you because of the, you know, your, your, your fashion choices and your fashion styles and you want to be a contrarian and we all have to deal with it and deal with the risks that come with that. No, I'm sorry, that's on you, sweetheart. That's what you wanted. Now, with that being said, one point that she makes that I do think is valid is th that's why I think this whole true trans, the true scum, trans medicalists are people don't understand how dangerous that narrative is because you have somebody like Blair White who's saying the only way that you can join the elite squad of trans girls just like me and if you want to be just like me and be like, you know, be able to use the women's restroom is you just have to be at a point in your transition where like, have you noticed how every time he talks, he's like, always they all love doing the hair flicking and like if you're just at a point in your transition where you don't cause a big stir and you look like a woman then then yeah it's best to be then you can be in the women's bathroom and in fact I've transitioned so well that not only am I accepted in the women's bathroom the men's room will, won't even have me anymore so now it's like I I must be be in the women's bathroom because it causes too much of a stir so because I'm such a good person I just try to do the right thing and just use the women's bathroom and so of course what is what's the messaging now that everybody's going to get right they say that they're against uh, medicalization of children yet not most men are not as like tiny and, and wafy as you so it's like do as I say not as I do even like Buck Angel they all talk about how great their transition is and how you know, because they pass so well, they get all these special trans privileges and stuff only because they made it. But then they're like, oh, we're against like just medicalizing anybody or. But you're basically saying that the only way to get there is to do all of these interventions. You know, you how it's like, how can you sit there and you platform men like shapeshifter and other, you know, people who have been so hard by medicalization and you're talking about going against these excuse me, going after these doctors, yet in the same breath, you're saying the only way to be trans is to really pass. Well, the only way to pass is to do, you know, elaborate medical interventions. And for a lot of men, you're, you're sitting there saying that you're against medical uh, childhood transition, but you're also really a walking billboard for it because a lot of these men know that, especially if they know their own genetics and if they know that they're prone to get big, right and and these parents know that their kid is prone to get large well geez if i want the kid to really be able to be one of the true special uwu trans who gets to be in the women's bathroom and who really gets to actually make the cut of being part of the elite squad well then we better get them on p 
puberty blockers. You think that they're going to be following uh, what, you know, Blair White is saying? It's like they sit there and they make fun of all of these, you know, trans people who started their transition way later or maybe were more risk averse and didn't have the money or the resources or didn't want to take the risks to do all the elaborate interventions that Blair and Buck did. And then they're going to they sit there and they make fun of these people in, in one breath. But and then in the other breath saying how bad childhood transition is and and all this sort of stuff. But but you're also basically saying that like only if you pass. Well, what's the best way to pass is to sit there and block as much puberty as possible and to do all these other things that are destroying people's lives. It's a do as I say, not as I do. And actually, it's still do as I do. Just I'm going to keep it on the DL. You, you, the only way you can sit with us is if you pass. And the only way that you're going to be able to pass is if you do all this elaborate medical interventions. So, yeah, nah. To even get their foot in the door to get access to hormones. So you're putting all of these barriers just for them to be able to go to the restroom, which is a natural thing that we all have to do. So what do I need to do? Piss outside? Because that's how I was treated my entire childhood. I would. Oh, but Buck is another. I just, you know, I like, I went like one of my posts, you know, got somewhat attention because she had re, I had like quote tweeted her. I, I'll do like a little quick video on it, but she had, I had quote tweeted her and she had quote tweeted me. And then a lot of people were debating because she was basically saying that if you still call me a woman, I know that you're just disrespecting me and da 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 da. And I was like, just to clarify, I gave a clip from our conversation where I explained why I use sex based pronouns for her. And I said, it's not to disrespect you. It's because when we change language, we change laws. It's literally that simple because laws are made up by words. Like a law is just a string of words that means something. Once you change the words that are in that law, you're literally changing the meaning of the law itself. And once we start colloquially changing words, we start like legally changing words, right? Um, and that's what happened with dictionary.com and a bunch of other dictionaries now have female as being anybody who identifies as one. So then, um, yeah, and then like, I mean, there's just so many things where they just talk out of both sides of their mouth and like, you know, she and she had just, I think Blair White, most recent short video was her and I mean sorry him and Buck Angel and Buck Angel is talking about how towards the first they're talking about how they're pushing it's horrible oh she said oh it makes me want to cry how much they're pushing medicalization on children it's just so evil and horrible it's oh we got to look at it because just really quick it just goes to to the heart of like how ridiculous and uh just like the complete hypocrisy of this stuff is you you got to see this cuz this this, this God. exemplifies my point so much it's on Blair White's channel hold on uh, so I can't Bro, it's so annoying that that automatically plays every time. Like, shut up. And, like, it, he, like, stands there and he's, like, going through his, like, gun collection. And it's, like, he's just trying to be, like, some, like, calendar model for, like, these, like, degenerate, like, white conservative men. It's so cringe. But anyway. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Just to show. I'm sorry. It's just, like, how clearly it, the, just the hypocrisy. It will actually make me cry right now because I just cannot believe that the world is letting this happen because now they're going to be you turned onto, oh my God, now I'm carved up. I, I can't have babies. I can't have sex. And I'm just like, please wake up out there, please. They say things like, would you rather have a dead kid or a trans kid? Mm -hmm. As if those are the only two options, they're literally creating a self-fulfilling prophecy of these kids taking their lives. And it's also important that they're getting this from the trans man perspective yes. and the trans woman perspective because we're not talking about about things that we don't know about. That's we, right. We've transitioned, we've taken the medications, we've had the surgeries, mm -hmm. we've done the thing. I feel like I wouldn't be doing a disservice not only to myself and my own transition of 30 years, and I would be doing a disservice to the young kids today who yes. need to see this is what it's all about. Like, look at me, I have an amazing life because I transitioned, but I didn't do it in a rush. It will actually make me cry right now because 
I have an amazing life because I transitioned, but I didn't do it in a rush. Like she's constantly talking about how transitioning was the best thing that she ever did. Also in my stream with her. And if you haven't yet, go watch. I have a kind of like debate slash conversation with Buck Angel. She literally, I, I asked her, I said, what do you think would happen if we deny interventions, you know, medicalization to adults? And she's like, oh, you know, da, da, da. I said, okay, well, how about you? What if we basically said you, you, you're cut off, you no longer have access to your uh, interventions or, you know, you never got a chance to medicalize. And she, then she was like basically saying that, she, you know, there was a chance she could have unalived herself or hurt herself. But then like later also says that it's manipulative when other trans people say that. So it's like the double speak, the, 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 you know, it just, it, there's no logical consistency, no logical consistency with these people. And it needs to be called out. Sorry. I just feel like when this whole topic comes up, like it obviously goes back to like, there's dudes like jerking off in the bathroom. And like, to me, yeah. like when I hear that, I'm like, okay, like, but that's not trans women. So it, when we talk about this conversation and it seems like the fear. What do you mean? I, I, I can't stand it. It's always, they're always trans until the, they do something bad. And I, even Ariel Scarcella. So I had a conversation with Ariel Scarcella on her Rumble channel which she was supposed to post to her main one, but never did. But like she had, we had a conversation and we were talking about this and I was like, we we're talking about preferred pronouns. She's like, well, it's a matter of respect. And I was like, okay. But I was like, so, but even with these, like, you know, I, I've noticed that like people will switch when it's like uh, Jessica Yaniv or Karen White or any of these trans identifying males who have committed heinous crimes. She'll go, oh yeah, no. She's like, I'm sorry, but that's where that's where my politeness stops. She goes, once you've done something horrible in society, I no longer need to recognize you as, you know, your, by your preferred pronouns. Then you're he, him all day. And I'm like, again, how does that make any sense? Because then it just makes it sound like Trans, trans, trans women, trans identified males never commit crimes because the second that, uh, they're trans, then, then suddenly they're back to, I mean, second they commit a crime, they're back to being men again. So then it's like the trans identified, we just, it's all moving goalposts. You know what I mean? There's no consistency. Then we can't really study these people because there's no clarity on who they are, what this group actually entails, what are, what are they defined by, what are they, what uh, what characteristics they have, and and if if that does not tell you that this is like a mythological thing where there's no tangible way to measure it or observe it or even define it, there's no coherence. Yeah, it, it's a mythological creature that doesn't exist. Here is like literally cisgender straight men who are being creeps. And what sucks is cis... So are you saying that trans beings, trans lesbians are not actually trans? Is that what you're saying, right? So these are these heterosexual men who are just being creeps... So go ahead and say it. Only homosexual transsexuals are the real trans. None of it makes sense, bro. And I'm sure that you still call these autogynophiles she, her. It's straight men can be like creepy. And then it's like trans women, and trans men are like paying the price for that. And I feel like, you know what? That's what's really hard about it is because then I think people get the idea or some people have the belief trans women are just like, they're just men in dresses. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like for so many trans women and so many trans men, the safest place for them is the bathroom that aligns with their gender. And if you go to a place where it's illegal to do that or you have to go and like, what's your ID or like your birth certificate, it puts you- So you're trying to tell me that you're safest in what men's spaces? Well, Sweet Pea, if that's true, then why are all the trans identified females always content to go to women's prison? Why don't we ever have a whole bunch of trans identifying females clamoring to get into men's prison? God, I can't wait for, I can't wait for Hakeem. Anybody who hasn't seen my interviews with Hakeem, it's like, I just, I, I would love to just pick his brain one more, like again. And it's like, once you start seeing what these men are like who are in prison, okay, the type of men who are in prison are like very high testosterone producing you know, I mean, these are serious, like, m like man, men, 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 like, like, 
you know, whole different fucking thing. Not these little soy boys and these little, you know, twinky gay guys, but like the, the, it's it's a whole other ball game. You've got to remember, right? You know, we were dealing with the LGBTQ. It's not exactly the most like masculine group of people. And well, unless you're like an AGP, but it's like, I, why are you not clam? You're saying the safest place is spaces that are, are consistent with your gender identity. Then why are you guys not all begging to go and, and applying to be in the men's prison? Do we have a single case of a trans identified female who was long term placed in a men's prison? I don't know of one, but I know of a whole bunch of men who are desperately trying to claw their way into the women's uh uh, prisons so much so that we had to do a whole uh, protest about it that was picked up by Tucker Carlson and he covered our protest of Edna Mahan Correctional Facility in Clinton, New Jersey, which is New Jersey's only women's facility. So it's not the same. In an objectively unsafe situation. And for me, like, I'm like, if I walk in the women's room, I mean, I know I like look like a lot, like I look twelve, but like I feel like someone be like, "Get out of here!" You know what I mean? But- yes, boo, you remember? <laughs> Princess needs to get back in her cage. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, you better stop fucking around because I'll tell you what. Princess about to be go go back in her cage. I'm about to put princess back in her cage, and it's like whoa! All of a sudden, the little like ah uh, yeah hi um. Mm. Well, hello, like, gentlemen, all of that, that whole act, the whole shtick, all of a sudden, like, peels off. Well, I, 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 women can't just turn that shit on. (laughs) That's the difference. That's the difference. I can't be like, yeah, I'm about to turn the fuck up in here. What's really good? Like, it's not, it doesn't hit the same, sir. Like, <laughs> yeah, so like anybody else, you guys have got to watch it. My, I have an interview with uh, uh, my, like somebody oh, who's like so dear to my heart. Ha- it's like interviews with Hakeem and he's locked up and he's telling us about this trans identified male and he's like yeah anytime he's about to fight with somebody he's like he sit there and he does like the whole like girly voice all the time and he's always acting like he's all like beep 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 but anytime he's about to get in a fight he always starts yelling like you about to make princess go back in her cage and he's like he's like pulls out like the full like man and he's like yeah it's something else it's really funny but like that's the vibe like I think you got to remember, like, when we're talking about it and we're talking about, like, these creepy dudes, like, in the bathroom. Here's the middle ground. Women. Here's the middle ground. You got, mm-hmm. Y'all ready? We're going to be so happy with this. This is the middle ground. We all actually agree. It's men that are the problem. Yeah. It's not trans women, real trans women. However, the problem is our community... Blair. It please... God, if anybody can, like, go tell Blair to just, like, watch the stream or, or just... Just this one part, and I might clip this and and put this. For some reason, every time I, like, do a clip of my streams, though, they, like, shadow ban it. Blair, please tell me, what is a trans woman? Since you're so clear that trans women are this special thing, and they're not the same as these trans trenders and these men who are impersonating trans women, then how about you define for us what a trans woman is can you give us a coherent definition and i mean coherent it needs to be like very like clear and definable measurable something that we can apply to laws and everything else policy that makes sense it's not just like a case-by-case basis could you do that i'd love to know blair if you want to have a conversation with me please i'd love to talk to you god i would so love to debate blair white that is like that that would be like i I could end my channel if i could get a debate with blair community has really eroded any barriers to actually being trans in the sense of your average cross-dresser can identify as a trans woman but then it's not a trans woman well you i'm glad you feel that way i feel that way as well i agree with you wholeheartedly however with the state of the political correctness within the trans community, you can't really say that. Like that person, right. is, this is I, person I, saying they're self ID. No, 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 they say that they're trans, I, which I, I, actually do, are. I actually do agree with you, Blair, 100%. Take because one back. Wow. That's one of those things. Yeah, I told you. I'm Let's really go. Like that. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes when we self identify, some people can take advantage of that. And yes. that is something, unfortunately, that we cannot control. Mm. But we have to combat it, combat it with facts 
with research and with the information that is presented in front of us. It seems like we're the ones that's teaching everybody else because we live in a predominant cis world. We're teaching them about us. And I just right the reason why there's so many like all these like pro trans doctors these quacks when I was like researching a bunch of like the the quack you know uh, OBGYNs who are like these big trans activists and stuff like that and there was like yeah you know and like they're like giving advice to other like clinicians about like how to be like more trans friendly and they're like yeah you need to like allow yourself to be teachable we'll make mistakes sometimes and even i make mistakes but you have to ask them say you know i i want to learn and then but then they were like but then she was like at the same time it's wrong to make them do the emotional labor of teaching you and then you need to learn from them and and it's so dumb and it's basically like so they, they're just making stuff up as they go along and it's constantly evolving it's like whatever the new like trend is you know like and it's like yeah we have to teach people about us yeah because you it's like it's a it's a religious cult belief it's not there's no coherence there's no definition there's no tangibility that that's a big part of the problem really think we cannot afford to be intellectually dishonest about our experiences as trans people. There is something that I think we can do. There's solutions to this. Like I, I do think that something like you have to be on hormones or something like that for two years or something before you can even change your eye. Okay, Richie. If anybody remember, you guys know who Richie is? Let's, uh, hold on. Uh, Richie. So Richie went and had his, uh, you know, penis inverted and basically went all the way and did everything. And his story is very much he was part of the NHS. He's, I guess, from the UK. He waited two years to get on hormones. I mean, his was as drawn out as possible. He talks about he did so many years of therapy. He was going back and forth. He wasn't sure what he wanted. He took it like at a snail's pace. At an absolute snail's pace. And he still ended up being a detransitioner and saying that it destroyed his life. Right. So I, I remember Rose of Dawn used to always talk about like, oh, if we, you know, we had two years and doing all this and that'll help. N no, unfortunately, no, no. It, all of these are just arbitrary hoops that all end up to the same outcome of hell right and if somebody is delusional and if somebody is hyper fixated on something such as getting you know this this surgery um they're gonna hyper fixate and and, and if they're not getting real help that's not gonna change right Ooh, whoops if they don't get the real real help to deal with the real issues then they're gonna remain hyper fixated i really do believe that obsessive compulsive disorder is an underappreciated phenomenon within the trans thing i think that they become obsessively uh fixated on the idea of transition and if i could just do this then i'll be happy if i could just get this one last thing then i'll be happy um I, I've been, I've been like meaning to get Richie on my channel. He said he would come on. Um, we, we just got it cause we're like, we're at such different time zones and he wanted to like talk first and all this sort of stuff, but that that's going to happen eventually. Anyway, I'll ID like an, across the board that would eliminate the cross dressers from being able to go there because then you can say, Hey, my ID says this and you can, and, and so it, it shows that you, it eliminate. I'm sorry, you think that some men, he's basically saying that like if you, you know, have these standards and hoops for people to go through that it'll get rid of the cross dressers and stuff. No, 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 no. You think that men won't go to extensive lengths to access their prey, especially prey. They'll play the long game. You are very naive if you think it's only about like, you know, opportunity and, and easy opportunity and stuff and low hanging fruit. No, absolutely not. If you give these men a blueprint for how they can get to their prey, best believe they're going to follow it. Taking steps. It doesn't, it's not about passability. It's about how long you've actually. Also, how about the fact that this guy is like your quintessential AGP and he's like, there's, there's, I think like a unique phenomenon. So he was in the military. He's, uh, you know, transitioned later. So it's like a lot of these men who, you know, had totally masculine childhood, never brought up feeling like a woman, you know, had uh, a very masculine, 
you know, archetypal adulthood. And then it was like around middle age, they start exhibiting signs of like cross dressing. And it usually starts off behind closed doors for a long time. Like he's probably like started off in like pantyhose and like jerking off in lingerie at home. And it's like, it just starts to spiral out of control. Right. It like, like, whereas like homosexual transsexuality, they say like, you know, the onset is much earlier in childhood. The onset for autogynephilia is usually like late teenagerhood and it can take a long, long time to like fully actualize. But it's like, are we going to pretend that this guy is not like your quintessential autogynephile? Like he literally, it's like meets the whole, he's exactly like a uh, Caitlyn Jenner type. And there's a lot of the military, these ex-military guys. That's that's something, a phenomenon that really needs to be looked at and figured out why a lot of these ex-military are turning trans later. Been taking the steps to transition. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. Right. I'm so excited to announce that local recordings are now available on StreamYard. Have you ever done a recording? I support the transgender military ban. Agreeers? I think that oftentimes when you talk about trans people in the military, people forget that most places, if we're talking about feet on the ground and really going into war zones, are really dangerous for trans people. And so it's a really an extra. So I think with the, um, so woman says, yeah, what kind of experiments are they doing on the military? I feel like it might just because of like trauma and PTSD. And it's the idea that like women don't have to be in these hyper, maybe it's like they're so traumatized by having to fulfill these hyper masculine roles that put them in danger, that left no room for softness or sort of like femininity or, you know, like being in touch with your feelings and it's like it's like they almost never want to have to go back to that ever again and they can think that like you know womanhood offers them some sort of refuge from ever being expected to be like hyper masculine again it's like they want to go so far in the opposite direction because of how much pain uh and trauma they experienced you know in these scenarios But it's so dumb because it's like they just click it on and off. And then I also do think that there's totally a sexual don't don't get me wrong. There's totally a sexual component for a lot of these men. Uh, But uh, it's such a complex thing. It'd be really interesting to like study, you know, a group of these men. Risk. You're talking about the culture that exists. Yeah, the Middle East, you know, it's like that's not exactly trans friendly. It's actually the opposite. The medications that we take sometimes put us in conflict with being able to actually be combat ready. Uh, But there is some nuance here, obviously, like if there was a trans cook or a trans medic, I'm not exactly going to be upset. But um, for the most part, when it comes to combat. I hate supporting like what you just said. I hate supporting it because it goes to the narrative of the um, should athletes compete in sports, you know, but trans athletes. Yeah. the, The drugs we take do weaken us you know so we're not like you just said combat ready but we're also not as physically strong as the guy counterparts standing right next to us and i will say like as a person with hiv i was diagnosed at 18 um i couldn't go into the military like because i couldn't get big tarby overseas you know yeah so i I will say as probably the only person that served in the military on this entire panel you should speak first um (laughs) (laughs) it's okay um the thing about it is I think there there is a lot of nuance in this. I actually have friends. And this woman, so I don't know if you guys, so the one trans-identified female, and I'm sorry, and like, you know, it's, it's I guess, offensive to say and politically incorrect to say, but this woman who's posing as a gay man, the one who, like, looks like Bill Gates. Where is it? Uh, this one right here. Yeah. You know, uh, his taking on... Like sexual practices that, you know, with homosexual men or or bisexual men and taking on these like homosexual sexual styles and has HIV now. You know what I mean? I've said it before. You know, there's the risk of contracting HIV through penetrative anal sex, receptive penetrative anal sex is astronomical, especially when you're having receptive penetrative anal sex with men who have sex with other men. 
And it, you know, so again, it's like, I've always feel like a lot of these women underestimate like how dangerous the spaces that they're going into when they're trying to enact this whole fetish, this gay male fetish, like they fetishize gay men, not realizing like that is a hardcore, some of these gay male spaces, these like sex clubs and these gay bath houses and all this other stuff, uh, those are some hardcore environments and and I've you know I've said it before and you know I've talked to other gay men again this is not about me being like homophobic or whatever it's just the reality of the fact that it's the same way like I feel like why lesbian women have such a hard time finding other lesbians is because women don't cross boundaries the way that men are sort of wired to you know men women are not like you know like hunting each other they're not like you know like sexually as aggressive and whereas men you know gay men don't have the mitigating factor of female sexuality to sort of slow it down whereas women are always about gatekeeping their fertility gatekeeping their bodies um and i was talking about my boyfriend with like this it's like i don't think that women are actually less sexual than men i just think that it's different they still have to gatekeep their bodies but they want sex you know they want sex with like a safe consistent reliable partner uh, you know, whereas men are, are like happy with a lot of variety and stuff like that. Oh, can you guys hear me? Um, oh, what, what, what? Oh, did they turn it off? What happened? Uh oh. Did they yank the stream? Oh no. Oh my God. They gave me copyright. Damn it. So every time I turn it on. I, you know, you know, my, it's my fault. It's because I like, I can't, I shouldn't have done that. I tagged Blair White. I posted a, um, damn, that sucks. I, I, uh, I, damn, I shouldn't have done that. I tag, every time I tag Blair White, this happens. Every time I do Jubilee streams where like the lesbian Jubilee stream where I, I just do it. I never have any problems. But in my first Jubilee stream, I had tagged Blair White. And all of a sudden I got copyright strikes. Then I remember I did the second stream and I never like notified him or anybody. And I didn't tag in Blair White or anything. I was able to play it as long as I wanted to. When I did the lesbian stream, played it as long as I wanted to. Right. Doing this stream once again, when I was on Twitter, I said, oh, I'm going live and I tagged Blair White and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be breaking this down. It has Blair White in it. Look what happened again. Say he's done this with every single live stream I have ever made in my life uh, gets gets taken down that re like re refers to him. I actually had one that I was able to get put back up because there was nothing wrong with it. It was totally legit. But he goes after any single time I do live streams about him. Yeah. And, and it's, oh, he's, he's you know, a free speech champion. Shut up. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a coward. You're a coward. Honestly, I have more respect. Buck Angel has done so many more heinous things. And it's, you know, but I least respect the fact that, like, she's willing to, like, step into places where people are criticizing her but you are a coward Blair you are a coward um like the fact that you you sit there and you will take apart all these other content creators and you will just go on and on trying to make an example out of these other trans identifying people and dunk on them and it's all funny but you cannot handle when someone does it to you why don't you join me for a debate? What's the problem? If you are so sure about what you believe, because you clearly take on a lot of debates, you have no problem debating the left. You're taking on these queer theory people and these woke leftists all the time. You know, I'm not a conservative either. I know that, you know, you did the whole Candace Owens thing. You know what I mean? So, so, you know, how about maybe don't take an easy target or, or is it's cause you know that I can see through you a little bit better than some of these other people. Let's try Let's just try it one more time and see if I can get it to play. Big Tarby overseas, you know? Yeah. So I, I will say as prime, the... maybe here, I think maybe what I'll do is I can change the uh, speed. Let's see if I can change the speed. Um,
only t person that served in the military. Yeah, I'm yeah, entire yeah, panel. Yeah, you should speak first. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, the thing about it is, I think there, there is a lot of nuance in this. I actually have friends that are currently serving in the military. I think there was a lot of um, miscommunication or misrepresentation of what the trans ban actually did. You know, you have soldiers. If you have surgeries, they go on profile, which means they can't actually do their job. They they can't do PT. Um, if you have bottom surgery, it, it takes a year. And so, as a leader, that person's still in a position of a job of somebody that should be doing it. Um, I don't mind somebody who is actually on hormones going there because there's a lot of people. I mean, people take PTSD medications overseas. They actually take six months of medication with them. Um, so a full-out ban, I don't necessarily support um, because I think that any and everybody in the military, as long as you can do your job, you can go in there and nobody really cares. But it is those times when if you can't perform your job, that, that becomes an issue. Um, you talk about with HIV, actually, most people don't even realize this. If you contract HIV while you're in, you can stay in a non deployable yeah. job. Right. And then also, you know, if we want to just get super real, you have the trans suicide rate. And if you really want to compound that by the veteran suicide rate, that's not exactly a concoction right. for very positive results. So I see how a trans ban could actually benefit us. And Lord knows I'm not trying to get drafted. So yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all good with that. Period. Yeah. Sell me love. So again, like that, that's a legitimate take. So the thing is, the reason why people like Blair White and all of them are able to kind of like get by is that they will have uh, like le like base legitimate takes, right? You sprinkle in like the nonsense with the good takes every once in a while. And um, yeah, you know what I mean? And it's just like a recipe for... Let's see. I wonder if it's because this kind of happened. Also, did happen. Maybe it's not Bobby, but this kind of. Let's see. How far in? Hold on. I'm at uh, an hour and sixteen. Let's see how far in I was last time before they cut me off. Oh my god! I was at exactly an hour and sixteen minutes last time. That's crazy. At exact. So maybe it's like a time limit thing. All right. I'm gonna start a new stream. I was at exactly an hour and sixteen minutes last time when all of a sudden this started to happen. And that's what I'm at right now. So maybe it's like they only want you to do like a certain length of a stream. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start another stream and we'll get back to it. All right. I will talk to you guys in the next stream. I'll be starting in like five minutes. I'm just going to go to the bathroom real, real quick. All right. I'll be back. Oh, no. I'm gone again. Ah.